TC. What's good, YouTube man? It's your boy, man. And today we got five times Larry Bird sought revenge. Larry Joe Bird, man. If y'all know him, he ain't he ain't take that disrespect lightly. You feel me? So he had to go out and go get some revenge on a on a on a few on a handful of guys. We finna watch it. I ain't never seen it, but we gonna watch it together. If you ain't never seen it, sit down, grab some popcorn, grab a drink, grab a water. Cause it's gonna be a nice one. Make sure you drop a like, make sure you subscribe on this video, man. Um we just hit 12k. That's what I'm man. I asked y'all for 12k yesterday and y'all did it for me, man. I appreciate y'all. But um I want y'all to let me know which one of these five times is the best uh revenge story. You feel me? Get down in the comments and let me know at the end of the video. I'll be letting y'all know at the end of the video too. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Hello, Kareem. Jaw to jaw. Once you do, uh, people look at you different. You had to stand up for everything you believed in, and then, and even if it's the one playing basketball, I mean, if somebody took the gloves oh off and wanted to go, you had to go. Me? If you didn't, there's no use playing. <laughs> I've seen him sick playing beer when like you take that. Take a look at Larry Bird. At first glance, he might not seem like the most intimidating guy. He doesn't really look like a scary dude at all. Many believed they could get away with pushing his buttons. But one thing you should know about the hick from French Lick, he always gets the last laugh. Every Game time. five of the first round in the 1991 NBA Every playoffs, time. Boston Celtics versus the Indiana Pacers. Larry Bird was approaching the end of his career. He had some serious back problems he was dealing with and wasn't quite sure how much longer he could go. In fact, before oh. this deciding game five, his teammates said that he was even struggling to put on his uniform. That's how much pain he was in. But with the series tied up two games apiece, he knew he had to use every last drop of fuel that was still in the tank. And on the other side was Chuck Person, nicknamed the Rifleman. Throughout the years, these two were sort of rivals and always talked trash to one another. For example, before a Christmas Day game, Person said to the media that he was going bird hunting, and when that comment made its way back to Bird, Bird made sure he would deliver a present to Chuck. Bird shot a three-pointer right in front of Person who was sitting on the bench, then turned around to look at him and said, Merry f***ing Christmas. Before the shot had even gone in yet, he would pull what? those kind of stunts before Steph even did it. So these two had some history, which made so what you basically saying is he did the Steph before Steph. <laughs> so Steph really got it from Larry the whole time. We all ain't even know that. Steph, Steph, he seen Larry turn around. He said, oh, yeah, I need, I add that to the bag. <laughs> this elimination game all the more epic. The game was just like the previous four games in the series, very competitive and highly entertaining, both battling to keep their season alive. But with four minutes left to go in the first half, an unfortunate event would take place. Larry Bird dives for a loose ball, but ends up landing on his face and immediately had to head back to the locker room. That should be and making it turns my face out that he broke his cheekbone, so the Celtics had no other choice but to play on without him. Boston was trying their best to hang in the game, but were obviously struggling to do so without Larry. While Chuck Person was definitely having fun, he was acting cocky the whole time, thinking that his pacers were on the verge of advancing to the next round. But little did he know, Bird was actually keeping tabs on the game in the back, and couldn't stand the arrogance that the pacers were displaying. So with six minutes left to go in the third quarter, he decided to return back to the game to shut him up. The image of him coming out of the tunnel was like something you would see in a movie as the crowd gave him a much deserved standing ovation. The doctor said that he probably had a concussion, but he did not let that stop him. His heroic efforts ignited a spark in the Celtics as oh Boston goodness, took a commanding lead and never looked back. 
Bird ended the game with 32 points and willed his team to victory. Yeah, it is a little special because um, I've known Chuck for a while and we always had run-ins, but um, it always seems like I, I get the last word. Here's <laughs> another instance. Like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Dude talking crazy, talking about he going bird hunting cuz, broke his cheekbone in the middle of the game, came back, dropped 30. He like the bro. The, he like the, the my face broke. It don't matter. It don't matter as long as I got my hands in this ball. <laughs> I'm getting thirty. You can't guard me, Chuck. What you talking about? <laughs> where the old man had to show the youngster who was boss. First, we have to talk about a matchup that Bird and Petrovic had in March of 1992. This game, Drazen was lighting it up. He shot 65% from the floor and was perfect from deep, leaving Bird and the Celtics extremely frustrated. Just when you thought he was finished, he put the dagger in Boston's heart unapologetically. He is open for the jumper. He scored an impressive 39 points to get his team the win. Petro was quickly rising to fame, and before these two teams faced off again, the next time around, the pre-show made sure to remind everyone about that stellar performance. What? what? Just who's going to guard Drazen Petrovic? Last time out against the Celtics, a career high. 39 points. He certainly is a big factor. And the way he was shooting in the He's Celtic game up there in the last eight. No one could guard him. Uh, He's been getting night buckets for, for sure. sure. It's about four minutes to go in the first quarter. He hit a three-pointer. And as he was backtracking, he got into Larry Bird's face and was talking some good trash. Now, Bird's not someone that you normally want to taunt, but... Drazen really let it, lit it up in that last meeting in Hartford with 39 points. All this hype that was going around about Drazen, you know Bird was listening. You could tell he was salivating at the mouth for some payback. Four of eight to two. We play two minutes and 40 seconds. Here's Larry Bird. Come here. Y'all know what time it is. Yep. He was talking crazy last time. Butter. This Watch time, this. Bird was the one on fire, dropping Chicken. 25 points, nine assists, and nine rebounds. While Drazen could Damn barely even get double. a shot off, he produced a stat line that was not even close to the one he had during their earlier meeting. Just a dull 12 points. He should have known that Bird never forgets anything. It's no secret that, that Larry mocks. Bird and Bill Lambeer absolutely despised one another. Within this heated rivalry, we saw them go at each other's neck on multiple occasions. But in one game in particular, Larry Bird literally got instant revenge. It was game two of the 1985. He's like, nigga, don't shake my hand. You trying to shake my hand, boy? I don't rock with you, boy. We not even finna fake that at the beginning. Bro, ain't no good sportsmanship. I'm not Rocky right now. Y'all know Larry, bro. Y'all know Larry. If he seen Bill Lambeer in the street, boy, they uh, they be wrestling. What you talking about? You know that, bro. Larry, Larry really not playing no games. Five Eastern Conference semifinals between the Pistons and Celtics. Bill Lambeer was deliberately elbowing Bird as soon as the game started. He oh wanted to God. take Bird out early, and he even ended up cutting his chin wide open. The way Lambeer was playing out there was probably not the smartest idea. If Larry is the guy you're doing it to, he's not the type to just let you get away with that. And from that point on, Bird did not play around anymore. Knocking Bird down, Larry wheels on Bermuda. You can't Four. go at me. Down, you can't guard me. Outside. Buckets. Buckets. Let's get money. Yeah. That's what we're doing. We're playing like that. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Right yeah. No, they're not involved. Give me that ball, little dude. Give me that ball. What you the center for? Give me them boards. You need all the boards. I'm the same. Now, don't get it twisted, Larry definitely welcomed physical play with open arms. But when you go out of your way to literally draw blood, all you end up accomplishing is releasing an angry bird from his cage. He put up 31 points in the it's second angry half right alone here. and wound up with a total of 42 points, making okay. Bill instantly regret his actions. Back when Larry Bird was a freshman in college at Indiana University. Like, what's wrong with him, though? You can't make Bird mad? He turned into Angry Bird and dropped 40. <laughs> the fuck is you talking? 42 to be exact. Man, it's easy out here.
Hey, stop worrying about my bonnet, dude. I, I seen, I heard you earlier talking about why I got a bonnet on seven in the morning, bro. Why, why is you worried about me, bro? Fuck. It was said that the veterans Amen. on that team would kind of bully him, even though I know that is hard to believe. And that one player in specific, Kent Benson, who was their starting center, constantly went out of his way to chastise him, always giving Bird a hard time since Larry was the new guy on the team. And rumors say that was part of the reason he didn't stay there very long and ultimately ended up transferring to Indiana State shortly after. Now, fast forward to Bro, if if I was cousin coach and that big man that was bullying Larry, I would have been like, dude, what the fuck is you doing, dude? You just made us miss on Larry Bird because you hate him. Imagine, bro. Imagine if he would have went to IU instead of Indiana State. He he still would have been Larry. <laughs> You know what I mean? But IU would have had a lot, a lot more, you know what I mean, going on. To 1985, Bird was now on the Celtics while Benson played for the Pistons. And what? this is where Bird would finally get his revenge. Well, yep. kinda. You okay. see, while Bird did do his thing out there, it was Kevin McHale who was destroying Detroit, especially Kent Benson. And get this, Larry actually noticed that McHale had the hot hand and that Benson was struggling Feeding. to guard him. So Bird Feed. encouraged McHale to keep making things miserable for Benson by simply feeding him the ball over and over again and grab Feeding. some popcorn watching him go to work. Benson eventually even needed Lambeer to help him stop McHale, but that also failed. And when that it was all said either. and done, McHale ultimately broke the franchise record with 56 points. Points, oh my at the goodness. expense of Kent Benson, which was really making him frustrated. Blaine Reichel, I think, has a he see, like, something on Kent. You let him get give me all these buckets. Call us up for me. And he's gone. <laughs> Benson has just been tossed in the game. Crap, like in the now, fuck Bird out of here. He definitely to me appreciated like that. the fact that McHale embarrassed Benson for him, but he wasn't quite done with McHale yet. You see, by McHale going for 56 points, he actually 56. broke Larry Bird's previous Celtics record, 53 points. And don't you like, bro? That's how deep it was, bro. He, you thought, you thought, you thought he forgot Benson? What's wrong with? Hey, you just a big on the Pistons, and you played against Bird. He ain't like you <laughs> at this point, bro. Y'all just picked up. You know what I mean? People that Bird didn't like, and that was y'all problem. That's why y'all couldn't win. You feel me? He used to see y'all big man and be like, man, I'm not losing to these. I'm not losing to these guys. You think for one second that Larry didn't realize that. Larry even said after Mikhail's impressive performance that he should have gone for 60. Larry, after the game, kiddingly told Kevin, Kevin, you should have gone for 60. He said, nah, you should have should have kept going because that may not last. Well, the fact that he didn't go for 60 and that Bird secretly wanted to get the record back, he got the idea, why not go for 60 himself? So guess what? Only about a week later, Bird would put on a show that would go down in history forever. A performance that even made the opposite team oh go my crazy. Goodness. He went for 60 points against the Atlanta Look at Hawks, them. reclaiming the they franchise up and down on points it. in a single game. So I guess you could say that he got revenge on his very own teammate during a 1987 con and hey, he like he like he like yeah bro i was i was feeding you i was feeding you a lot of them 56 but watch watch how i get though <laughs> watch how i get though so you talk about verse you know he ain't rock with Dominique for real. He used to get Dominique the Bennett. Test between the Boston Celtics and the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan, who was still a baby at the time, attempted to guard Larry Bird, but he wasn't all that successful at it. Bird just took Jordan to the post at ease. So then head coach of the Bulls, Doug Collins, decided to put a slightly bigger player on Larry, forward Ben Poquette. And that only made things worse for Chicago because Bird Poquette. took that as a personal insult. As soon as Collins put Poquette in the game to guard Larry, Larry said this out loud to Doug Collins. Ben Poquette, are you f kidding me? And here's why Bird reacted in such a way. Quote, 
as far as playing, I didn't care who guarded me. I just didn't want a white guy guarding me because it's disrespect to my game. And well, since Larry couldn't really tell Poquette to go sit back down, he thought he might as well humiliate him while he's at it. Come here. He like, bro, you can't guard me, dude. Like, look at you. You got number 50 on. Like, I'm Larry Bird. You just can't fuck with me. Look, he's off the top of the back. He's going to go in because you guard him. You feel me? All that, look, where you at? You're not here. I'm just chilling. You know what I mean? And give me the ball. Pull up. Why are you not jumping, bro? Larry Legend doing? would ultimately drop 41 points, forcing oh Collins to think twice before quote unquote oh, disrespecting God. his game ever again. So there you go. All this man wanted to do was get the W for his team and go home to cut it. Hey man, that's the end of the video right there, bro. Larry didn't like <laughs> he didn't he didn't like he didn't like why he played. End of the that you know what I mean? If you didn't get that from the story, that's what you should have got. It's disrespectful. He like they can't guard me. They will never be able to guard me. You feel me? And they nobody could honestly. <laughs> nobody could though. But uh, make sure you drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. Get down in the comments. Let me know what you want to see me uh react to next. If you got some Larry Bird videos you want to see, let me know. I'll do it. And um, my favorite one was the Benson story. <laughs> you feel me? He had his mans drop 56 on him just because he cause he tried to talk crazy to him. Uh, you know what I mean? A few years back, he thought Larry forgot about it. You feel me? That get back a month. <laughs> but nah, man. I'm going to get up out of here. I hope y'all enjoyed this one, man. But turn on them post notice and we out. Peace.